having a hard time leaving. <laughs> That's what the word linger means. Linger means when you're somewhere and the spirit might tell you to leave and you're still looking around. Amen. That's what lingering means. When the, when the spirit speaks to you and say, get on out of here, yeah. and then you're still looking around. That's what lingering means. Amen. Because then and there's all kinds of reasons why you might linger, but one might assume the reason why the Bible uh, records his lingering because they want us to know that Lot was still very attracted to where he was. Yeah. Yeah. He was still very attracted to where he was. Uh, so he lingered and the man laid a hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord being merciful unto him. And, I, what I, what I, and I, again, if we understand that Lot may not have been totally convinced that he was supposed to go, the Lord's mercy, as I always like to say, is when the Lord drags you out of trouble. And sometimes the Lord brings us out of trouble, uh, but sometimes the Lord drags you out of trouble. And uh, you didn't get out of that trouble because you were trying to get out of trouble. Uh, you got out of trouble because one day you prayed a long time ago, Lord, keep me out of trouble. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to pray, Lord, keep me out of trouble. And years later, the Lord will answer your prayer and keep you out of trouble. So not that you want to get out of the trouble, but the Lord will answer your prayer if you tell him to keep you out of trouble. Or if you tell him to get me out of trouble. But I, my prayer, Lord, save me from myself. So when I want to get in trouble, help me, Jesus, until I can get my mind back. The Bible said about the prodigal son, he came to himself. Amen. Sometimes when we're in the middle of trouble, we'll come to ourselves. But that trouble doesn't mean that trouble still won't tempt you. It doesn't mean that you won't linger there. But sometimes you come to yourself in the middle of the trouble. And God will give you just enough way of escape. He'll make a way. Amen. Of escape that we might get. So he made a way for Lot here. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And so the Lord was going to destroy not only that area specifically, but the area around it. And then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew these cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities that which grew upon the ground. Uh, but we all know his life, his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. And she became a pillar of salt. So I want to uh, use for a topic, and I, I'm going to have to read all my scriptures so y'all can understand the topic. But the topic is with Christ, your future is bright. Right. Uh, but the caveat, you have to have Christ. You've you got to take Jesus with you. Amen. With Christ, your future is bright. Amen. And I'm going to talk about three steps. One is, don't look back, look forward. Uh, you, you've got to, if you're going to have a bright future, you've got to look forward. You can't look back. And then number two, while you're looking forward, You've got to press ahead. Yeah. In other words, you can't just look forward, but you actually got to move forward while you're looking forward. Right. Uh, there are some people who are moving, looking forward, but they haven't done any movement to bring about the forwardness that they're looking into. Right. Uh, there are some people who have a vision, uh, but they have not moved or done anything that will bring forth the vision. So not only must you have a vision, but you must have some type of strategy and action that leads and carries out the vision that you have. You can't just have a dream. Now, if you're going to have a dream that comes true, you've got to move toward the dream at some point. Uh, you got to do something. And so our second step is you've got to look forward, but then you've got to press ahead. You've got to do something while you're looking forward. And then the third step, while you're looking forward and while you're moving forward, you can begin to look for the spiritual and the material blessing. Yeah. Amen. The spiritual and the material blessing come because your steps are ordered by the Lord. Amen. Uh, notice nowhere do I say you have to make the spiritual and the material blessing come. God will take care of that if you take care of the first two. See, God will take care of the blessing. Uh, God will provide the blessing. Abraham understood, Isaac, God will provide. He is the judge.
Jehovah Jireh. Uh, but I do have to put this sword up in the air and believe that I can cut you in half. I do have to go to the mountaintop like he instructed me to do. So Abraham understood it. Yes, God will provide, but he's only going to provide if I'm obedient and carry out the very thing that I do not want to do, the very thing that caused the need for the provision. Sometimes God has you in a situation where you are making yourself in poverty, creating the very need that God wants to take care of. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, sometimes you are doing the very thing uh, that you think are, is creating a need or that is hurting you. If not hurting you, God is taking care of you uh, while you're doing that sacrifice. I was thinking today that sometimes when people are so far and there's so many people to pray for, and then God said to me, they said, listen, you just got to keep working. I'll go take care of them if you keep working. But if you stop to go take care of them, then the work going to get done. Somebody's got to work. God's going to take care of the folks you're praying for. God's going to provide the provision. God's going to provide the healing. God's going to provide deliverance. But somebody's got to do the work. Abraham said, i got to go do the work, and God will provide at the right time the ram in the bush. But I want to talk first of all about not looking back and looking forward. I want to Focus on two parts of the scripture. First of all, Lot, while he lingers, and then his wife, who looks back. And there, and there are really two situations. There's two different times, right? The, 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 there's a time lapse between when Lot lingers and his wife looks back. And so the Bible made me suggestion that uh, their motive for wanting to stay attached to the city was different. Amen. Their, their motive for wanting to stay attached to their past was different. There are different reasons why people like to stay attached to their past. Uh, Everybody is not trying to leave their past. Right. Even though the past may be painful, even though the, pain, the past may bring uh, negative memories, uh, there are some people who would rather live in those negative memory, memories than step out and believe God for a new future. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, if you've been crying your whole life about your past, it's hard to stop crying and say, I don't have to cry anymore. I feel like preaching this morning. Listen, if you're going to step into your future, uh, you've got to face your past, but you cannot let your past hold you down. Uh, you can't let your past hold you down. You can't let your past slow you down. Uh, you can't let your past determine your decisions for your future. You can't allow your past, and you can't be so attracted to the aesthetics of your past. Now, aesthetics are simply the surroundings and the environment of the past. There, there's security in the past. Amen. Even if the past, somebody said a long time ago, uh, listen, even if the past wasn't good, there's some people who they feel like that's still safer. Y'all heard some folks say this before. Sometimes when you're in a bad relationship, folks will tell you a bad relationship is better than no relationship. Y'all don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> Right, right, right. Now, 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 what is that saying? It's saying there's something about the aesthetics of this situation that makes me at least feel somewhat safe. And you have to understand that even in a painful situation, in a situation where your past is negative, it still can be safer than launching out into the deep. As Jesus told us, that it still can be safer than taking a chance and moving ahead to the vision that God wants you to realize in your life. Oh, so here's Lot, and here's his wife, and the Lord is about to propel them from a place that they should never have been in in the first place. Mm -hmm. Because Lot chose this place because of the wrong reason. I don't have time to preach about that today. But he chose his location for the wrong reason. Uh, because he chose his place for the wrong reason, uh, it, it never really gets right. The, the situation now, God can fix that which is wrong. But the songwriter said, what is crooked, he'll make it straight. Anybody know that song? Yeah. Off the fatness of the lamb, I'll feed you. Yeah. Help me, Holy Ghost. That's going way back now. <laughs> Listen, but the Lord can take that which is crooked and he can make it straight. Amen. Amen. But, but Lot had to want it to be straight once he got there. Once he realized he had made the wrong decision and he got there, he had to have the one to cry out to God, Lord, I need you to straighten this out. I'm down here where I really don't belong. I'm a 
stranger trying to sing in a strange land. Probably the Holy Ghost. But, but something about the land attracted him. Something about the land, something about the people attracted Lot. And so he became attracted and he became connected to a place that he should never have been connected to. His wife, on the other hand, seemed to be in a different state where it's much more about an emotional attachment. Amen. We have no record of her uh, repelling the leave, the departure. Listen, there are some people, uh, they didn't cry when they left home when they were 18, 19, 20. Amen. But when they got where they were going, they never stopped crying again. You know what I'm saying? There's some folks that uh, when they leave, they don't stop crying. Right? They think this is the world. Right? And people, kids who go to college, they leave their parents and think, I'm going out here and I'm going to live it up. And then as soon as mom and daddy give them a kiss, they spend the rest of the semester crying, saying, Word, man, they're not going to call you and tell you because they got too much pride. But they somewhere sitting in the corner crying the blues, uh, wishing and hoping that they could get back home just for a cookie or something. <laughs> so there was some attachment here that she needs uh, to, to emulate what you were in the past. You can't allow the people around you to tag you based on your past. Tagging. What I mean by that is that basically they've always seen you that way, so that much you must be. God is able to take you out of those tags. He's able to take you out of those roles uh, that have been predefined for you by the saints. He's able to take you out of those roles that have been dictated to you by your family. He's able to take you out of those roles that have been dictated to you by your environment. God has greater. God has greater for you. God has greater for you. So the next step is after we look forward, then you've got to press ahead. And the reason why I say press ahead, because that's what Lot's wife and Lot didn't do. They didn't press. They knew that they were leaving, but they didn't press. See, when you're pressing, you can't turn around while you're pressing. Uh, if you, you, you talk to anybody, and if you're in a race with somebody, if you turn around, they will catch you. Because you, when you turn around, that get you slow, you got to slow down to turn around. So I said, but when you're leaving your past, you don't have time to turn around. You don't have time to look them back. You don't have time to do any calculations. You don't have time to do a cost-benefit analysis. You should, I said, Lord, you take care of that, and I'm going to take care of this. Yeah, Lord, if you take care of that, I'm going to take care of your business. So Isaiah continues in 43 and 19, and he said, now listen, after you have forgotten about the old stuff, and after you have erased some of that stuff, again, some of us, we need to take an eraser, and you need to erase it. You need to erase it psychologically, right? Your past, you know your past is a part of you when you're always thinking about it. You gotta erase it. If you're, if you're stuck in your past in your mind, you gotta start erasing that past. If you're always longing for 20 years ago, you need some help. 20 years ago is not coming back. Isaiah then says, Behold, God will do a new thing. And he said, it shall what? It shall spring forth. Now notice, he didn't say it's you doing it, that he's just saying you're prepared to do it because you've moved from your past. See, God can't move us and propel us into our future until we're prepared to leave our past. God knows our heart, and he knows when we're ready to leave that stuff. He knows when you, let, you can put stuff down, but it don't mean you left it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can sell something you have, but it doesn't mean you don't still have it. You know what I'm saying? If you sell something, and then you're always thinking about it, it's still there. It don't matter if it's not there physically. God needs it to move out of your heart. God needs it to move out of the priority list. Just because you don't have something physically doesn't mean it's 
not a priority in your life. Always remember that. So he said, now listen, I'm going to do a new thing, and it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? Now what are you saying there? He said, this is not something only that you have to walk by faith. He said, I'm going to show it to you. Right? That's why our, 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 power, our line of statement is, your future is bright. God will show you when you have finally let your past go. He will begin to manifest more clearly your future when you let your past go. Your vision will become clearer. Your vision will become more plain once your past is gone. What God wants to do with you, how God wants to use you, will begin to open up once you depart from your past. He will begin to make it clear. He will begin to open the doors. He will begin to make the spaces. The Bible says a man's gift will make room for him. Now that scripture has two situations. It means that basically when you give, it will open you up to certain arenas that you might not have had before. But what it also means is the talent, the knowledge, the skills, and the abilities that God has given you. God will begin to open doors. When you let your past go, when you forget about those things which are behind, and press. God will begin to open doors to your future. You'll find yourself doing what God wants you to do. Once you begin doing what God wants you to do, then you're no longer thinking about what you used to do. Somebody hear what I'm saying? The reason why some of us are upset about what we used to do is because we haven't let God use us to do what we should be doing. Your past will always be more grandeur than your future until you let God do with you what he's trying to do. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes. Your path will always be more grand. Yes. But the only reason it's more grand is because you're focusing on the past and not your future. Yes. So he said, I'm going to do a new thing. He said, I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. Now, why does he emphasize wilderness? And why does he emphasize rivers in the dark? Because he wants you to know that as you move forward, it's not going to be easy. <laughs> See, what he wanted you to understand is now when you move forward, I don't want you to hold on to your past because here's what you do when you hold on to your past and try to move forward. You'll be up, you'll be down. You'll be up, you'll be down. Y'all heard what I'm saying? Y'all know folks, they got three or four boyfriends. They got three or four girlfriends because they can't leave their past. But when you finally leave your past, you got to leave the past boyfriends and the past girlfriends where they were in the past. Watch the same way. When you get ready for God to use you, when you get ready to be used by God, you got to let go what you used to do. Somebody said, I used to be a great preacher, but are you a great preacher right now? I used to be a great teacher, but you got to be a great teacher right now. between the past and the future. We vacillate. We go back and forth. The Bible says a double-minded man is what? You look both in your past and your future. You neither, neither group will be able to figure you out. You ever had a situation where nobody around you can figure you out? If you go from group to group, they not, neither group is going to be able to figure you out. They're going to think you're wacky, they're going to think you're wacky. Amen. So he said, I want you to know, as I prepare you to your future, it's going to be difficult. Because I don't want you to look back like Lot's wife did when it gets difficult. See, because part of what we've done, when God propels us into his future, he's going to require a vow. He's a God of promises. He's a God of covenants. He's a God of vows. 
stuff. And so he's not going to put me in a position where he's going to propel me to my future until he gets something from me that says I'm committed. Oh. Yeah. He's not going to just get it. He's not going to start opening doors just because I walk into my future. Now he's going to say, now that you're here, let's have a little talk. Somebody said, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about it. Right? You're going to have to sit out and make a commitment. You're going to sit out and tell him, Lord, I'm going to sacrifice. Lord, if I'm suffering with you, I shall reign with you. I'm going to hurt a little bit. I'm going to lose some friends. I'm going to lose some family, Lord, but I'm going to press. The Lord going to need a hair of before you go into your future. Part of that vow is, Lord, I'm willing to let that go. I'm willing to let that go. And he'll know when I tell him that whether I'm telling the truth or not. A lot of people told him they're willing to let that go, and the next week they're right there again. Right. Uh-huh. Right. right? Now, the reason why I use relationships so much, just in case y'all wondering, but everybody, most everybody is in a relationship unless you're. <laughs> Under 18, y'all right, young people? <laughs> Jesus. Go ahead, Pastor. Now, let's understand 43 and 21. The Bible says what the Lord did is when you move into your future, it's not like Jeremiah said that when I was in my womb, right? When I was in the womb, the Lord knew me, right? Y'all know, and people quote that scripture. Now, I, I personally don't believe that every scripture in the Bible is about all of us. I don't believe that. Well, I think believe that's about Jeremiah. But you can believe it. It doesn't matter because it either is or not. That's the great thing about the Bible. You can disagree and still both be wrong. <laughs> right? You can disagree and both be wrong. Right? But here, what the Lord says is, once you move into your future, he said, I'm going to form you for myself. What does that mean? That means the Lord is going to begin to shape and mold you. Because remember, you never left the potter's house. When you're saved, you never leave the potter's house. See, you were in the potter's house. I said, well, well how do you get to the potter's house? You, you, when you, once you got saved, you got in the potter's house. Now, you might not have been in, in, in the first line. You might not have been where he wants you to be. But you were at least, you know, you ever been somewhere you just say, I'm in the arena? Gloria, oh, you ever been in a church and there's so many people there? You just hit the door, you listen to the service. Uh, sometimes you go to a funeral and it's so crowded that they didn't really want to experience loss. See, in order for you to forget about your past, you've got to be willing to experience loss. See, again, even if it's a negative past, it's something to hold on to. There are some people that are like that, but my childhood was bad, but you hang it on. Do what he's trying to do with you now that you're an adult now. Uh, you're growing up now, so you can't hang on to everything that happened to you in your teenage years. Amen. Amen. So she had trouble experiencing loss, had trouble experiencing a situation that would be different. And when, when you have trouble experiencing loss, you tend to hold on to that, or you tend to want to. It's like people who uh, keep all kind of, I'm going to have nothing wrong with pictures. God bless pictures. We've never seen so many pictures as we see now. But at some point in the day, you got to put the pictures down and start living your life. You can't live your life through pictures. Help me, Holy Ghost. Huh? You don't want to have so many pictures in your house, you can't leave your house. Somebody hear what I'm saying? You don't want to have so many pictures on your phone, you can't put your phone down. You don't want to have so many pictures that drive in everything you do. You've got to put those pictures down and live a life like God wants you to live it. You've got to be willing to suffer loss in order to go to your future. When you go to your future, the past is lost. I said, well, well, what about all those good memories? They're in there, but you don't have to call them up every day. Somebody hear what I'm saying? It's like, it's like a person who, uh, to get happy, they got to think about 25 years ago. You better get something to get happy about right now. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You don't want to just have to put on an old record. 
I feel like preaching today. When I was young, they would put on their own records. So I'm saying, when, when, when things weren't going good, they would go back to some of that old stuff. And at that time, they had 45 and they had LP. And, and when the things weren't going well in the house, they would put something old on. Uh, something where everybody was laughing, something where everybody was smiling, something that would make everybody feel good. But listen, sometimes you got to change your current situation. You got to change your current circumstance. Uh, you can't always go back to the old song. But they would call up stuff and they would uh, pull the family album out. Some people uh, pull their high school yearbook out. That was the best time of their life. Listen, you've never gone back to high school. Some of y'all wasn't there when you were in high school. <laughs> right? You can't go back to college. There are folks who go to college and they go back to college for you every year. You're never going to get those years back. Every time you go back, you're older now. You've got to let that past go. You've got to say, Lord, what are you trying to do with me right now? At this moment, at this hour, what's my life? What's the purpose of my life? Why am I here, Lord? What are you trying to do with me? And so we've got to be willing to suffer loss if we're going to move forward. You've got to be willing to suffer loss. That means loss of everything. Right? You've got to be willing to lose everything. Right? You've got to be willing to Bible says, deny yourself. If you're going to have loss, you've got to be willing to have a loss in relationships, a loss of money. Listen, there's some material things. You don't need those material things anymore. Uh, those material things might have got you over the hump, but you don't need them now. You move past that material stuff. Listen, there are some of us, uh, you went through a stage of life where you were materialistic, uh, and you grabbed a bunch of stuff. Uh, some of you, you couldn't go to the mall without buying something. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That you couldn't go to the store without picking up something. But now the Lord has got you to a place uh, where that stuff don't matter anymore. Where that stuff don't mean what it used to be. Some of y'all got jewelry. That jewelry don't mean what it used to mean. I feel like preaching. You know how sometimes folks get uh, jewelry from a special person? The person not special anymore sell that jewelry. So I'm saying, help me, Holy Ghost. See, the reason why you have to understand that is because, see, when you hold on to things from your past, that's the way to hold on to your past. Right. Let me say it again. When you hold on to things from your past, that's the way to hold on to your past. Amen. If you want to let your past go, you got to let the stuff that came in your past go away. <laughs> right? You've got to let stuff go because stuff is symbolic. Stuff means something. It don't just mean what it is, it has an attachment to it. Yeah. It has a memory to it. It has an emotion yeah. to it. That's why there's some of that stuff you look in your house and can't nobody explain why you got it but you. Right. You're the only one who can explain why you got that. Because everybody else that looks like you're, what's my new word? Wacky. Right? Everybody else that looks like you're wacky. But to you, it means a lot because they don't understand the time. They don't understand the moment. They don't understand the circumstance in which you acquired that. But now you've got to understand the Lord has moved you past that circumstance. He's moved you past that situation. He's moved you past that individual, those individuals. And now you can let that go and say, Lord, I'm ready for some new stuff here. I'm ready for the move forward. And so you've got to be willing to suffer loss. You've got to be willing to give stuff up. Right, you gotta be willing to give stuff up. We, we hold on to too much stuff, y'all. When you hold on to stuff, it's hard for you to go to your future when you hold on to everything you bought 10 years and 20 years ago. Help me, Holy Ghost. Huh? When you walk in your house with everything is old, how are you gonna be new? Sometimes you gotta get new around you to get new inside of you. Somebody hear what I'm saying? I got some folks going today. Sometimes you got to get, I'm not talking about married folks either now. But sometimes you got to get new around you to get new in you. But one way to let memories go is you got to let the stuff go that's associated with those memories. You 
you got to let that stuff go. God's trying to move you to a different place. He's trying to move you to a different plane. And some of that stuff is holding you back. And I know, again, I understand from a psychological professor, it makes you feel safer. There's no safer place than when you get to where you were the happiest in your life. Amen. Right? Everybody here, if I ask, don't say, don't, don't say anything out loud. But if I ask you, go back to an age. Everybody has an age they can go back to. You were living it up. Amen. You know what I'm saying? You were a happy camper. You woke up happy, went to bed happy. All right. Everybody who saw you said, man, they happy. Right? That's the age folks want to get back to. You can't get back. <laughs> right? We can't. The Lord doesn't let us go back to that age. So you got to make that age now. Y'all heard what I'm saying? You got to, whatever you were doing there, you got to say, Lord, make it over again. Take me back, oh Lord. Danny Bell said a long time ago, take me back to where I first believed. Help me, Holy Ghost. And then Isaiah 43 and 18 says, Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. So what he's saying is that you, you've got to somehow understand that what God is trying to do with you is unrelated to what he has done with you in the past. Now this is very important to understand, right? Because everybody said, well, aren't we on this life trajectory where you can see patterns? But God does not operate under the same conceptualizations that men operate on. God does not have to connect your 20s to your 30s. He doesn't have to connect your 30s to your 40s. Somebody hear what I'm saying? God is able to take you today and make you over and make you new uh, and give you some new situations uh, and remake your ministry and remake your preaching and remake your teaching and remake your witnessing. God is able because he's all powerful. He's sovereign. Uh, he's able to take somebody who's operating here today and put them over there tomorrow. He's over to take a fisherman uh, who's just looking for fish uh, and make them fishers of men. Uh, he's able to take a tax collector uh, who's sitting at the table just counting money uh, and able to make them one of the greatest preachers uh, in the world. God is able. So he says, don't lie. The way you have been defined in your past determine your future. Spiritually, God is able to take anybody and use them bountifully. Yeah. And that's what you've got to understand. Some of us, we get tied up in roles because we've always been, that's because we've always been a deacon doesn't mean that God doesn't want you to preach. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Uh, just because you've always uh, been in the choir doesn't mean that God doesn't want you to teach. Uh, just because you've always been an usher doesn't mean that God doesn't want you to be a nurse. Uh, just because you've always been on one committee doesn't mean that God wants you to work on one committee. You can't let your past dictate your future. You can't let what you've done in the church in the past dictate what you're going to do in the future. You just got to say, Lord, I'm available to you. can't fall in these defined roles. Oh Y'all know how it is in the church. When you grow up, oh, you're going to be a preacher. Oh, you're going to be this. Oh, you're going to be that. Someone's heard that our whole lives. Right? And then what happens is you may be that, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to be something else. Right. You know what I'm saying? Some of those people may have been prophets, but they might have only prophesied in part. Right. Y'all heard what I'm saying? Some of the folks who told you what you were going to do, they were prophets. They come to do, but they didn't tell you the other half because God didn't reveal it to them. You gotta care, keep an ear open to what the other half is. We prophesy in part and we know in part, but the God will bring you the full revelation later. So Isaiah makes it very clear and he's consistent with the story of Lot and with the story of Lot's wife that you cannot look back. You can't afford to allow your past to dictate your future. You can't afford to allow your surroundings. You have to just wait in the back until people stand up, and then you get to walk in. But sometimes the Lord just needs you in the arena. He just needs you in the potter's house. Your turn is coming, but you got to stay in the house. But the Bible says that once you get into the potter's house, the potter puts you into his hand. Once he puts you into his hands, Isaiah said he forms you. Now I want you to understand what that means. When the Bible says he puts you in his hand, the Bible said there was a clay. It was in the potter's hand, but the clay was marred. My God, yes. The clay wasn't perfect. The clay wasn't necessarily always obedient. The clay wasn't always doing what it should have been doing. But it was in his hands. 
Is that I'm not have attained yeah. uh, perfection, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which I also apprehended of Christ Jesus. He said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, this revelation I do have, that I'm not going to focus on the past. Right. I'm not right. going to focus right. on 10 years ago. I'm not going to try to relive. 